for true faith, and this is the test of true faith. What is it when things get hard and there's an opportunity to go back? What is it that prevents somebody from doing that? What stops you from doing that? What does true faith do at that point? And listen, the fact is, you can lay it down right here. There is a discontent with true faith. And you know what leads me to say that? Is this word in 11, 16. They desire. They have a desire. Faith is driven by a desire. And, and the inverse of that is faith is driven by a discontent. You have a desire for that, you're discontent with that. Right? I mean, that's what it, And you know what's interesting? In verse 16, it says a better country in all of our translations, but you know in the original, there's no country there. They just supply it. Because, in ev- I mean, unquestionably, that's what he's talking about. But in the original, it's just this. They desire better. You see, that's the desire of faith. Faith believes that what is past the finish line is better. That's, that's true faith. Because it really believes it's better. You can say it's better, but if you don't continue running the race, you don't show that you really believe it. When you're running along and you look over there and you see the folks sitting around and meandering at the shops and you're running in the marathon and you're thinking, oh, that sure would feel good. Cool drink in hand, not running, not out here, not in this blazing sun, not working like I'm working and I'm hitting the wall and my body's shutting down and my knees are weak and I feel like I'm going to fall and oh, it's, it's shady over there and it's nice over there. You know what keeps you going? You know that there's a glory in finishing that finish line that those people aren't going to have. And you start looking over there and you recognize that in comparison with this eternal weight of glory that's at the end, what they've got, if you can see it, if you can put your glasses on and see, ah, what they're, they're really over there chewing on pig husks. That's all it is. And to the Christian, that's what it is. We look around at the world and it, it, it tries to entice us. It's... It's this great big vanity fair and it's saying buy, buy, buy. But the Christian is running along in this race and saying I don't want to buy what you have to sell because I know it doesn't really satisfy. My heart is yearning and desiring a better country. And listen, it's not just a better country because it's another country. It's not just a better country because God built it. It's a better country, big brother, because it's Emmanuel's land. It's where Christ is. It's, if you read about the city of God in Revelation, what is it that's so glorious about it? God is there. God is in their midst. God is the light. The lamp is the lamb. It's, it's that. Their throne is there. That's where the abiding place, the abiding place of God is with men. That's why they want to get there. That's why they want this city they want to see brethren when Andy says onward what does that mean it means brethren we're headed to the temple to look into the face of Christ that's what it means that's where we're going and we can look over at the martini sippers over here and we say I don't want that I want the face of Christ it's better I desire that and it drives us forward and that's what true faith is it looks at that and it says I see a Christ in the pages of these, this book and I want Him. I want His glory. I want to see Him and I'm not going to be satisfied till I have that. I've tasted of this world and I've caught a glimpse of that city and a glimpse of the Christ of that city. And just the glimpse just causes this to pale. 